Hey everyone, welcome to the Flutter development series from Roma Just Codes, where I'll be developing beautiful user interfaces with Flutter. And in this video, I'll be publishing the Android version of this app to the Google Play Store. In this series, I've been building the UI for a fictional grocery and produce app. And for this episode, I'll be covering the minimum requirements for publishing a Flutter app to the Google Play Store, which prerequisites are needed before publishing, assets needed, all the way up to releasing the app to production. Before you proceed, you make sure you've tested your application well and ran it through rigorous QA. Some useful tips before you publish your app. Make sure you have your launcher and splash screen icons in place to make it look more polished, which we covered in the previous video. Follow the link provided. You can generate a sample APK, one of the formats for distributing your packaged application and distribute it to a group of beta testers to get feedback, which you can also do via the Google Play Store. I'll show you a little bit of that later. But this sample generated APK, you can even send it via email if not too big or host it somewhere if you don't want to go through the store until you formally publish. And with that out of the way, let's go through our laundry list before publishing. You can find some of these instructions on the link provided in the description on how to build and release an Android app. The first thing you want to do is give your app a digital signature. Use the following command for creating an upload key store. The link provided below has both Mac and Linux versions of this command. Follow the prompts accordingly. This command stores the upload key store.jks file in your home directory. If you want to store it elsewhere, change the argument you pass to the dash key store parameter. However, keep the key store file private. Don't check it into public source control. Create a file named key.properties inside the Android folder of your project. This will contain a reference to your key store. I'm saving mine on my user folder. Again, this is private. Don't check it into public source control. Configure Gradle to use your upload key when building your app in release mode by editing the build.gradle file inside the Android slash app folder in your project. Add the key store information from your properties file before the Android block. Load the key.properties file into the key store properties object. Find the build types block and replace it with this chunk of code. What this does is that every release builds of your app will now be signed automatically. Edit the Android colon label in the application tag to reflect the final name of the app. Add the Android permission, internet permission, if your application code needs internet access. The standard template does not include this tag, but allows internet access during development to enable communication between Flutter tools and a running app. Review the default Gradle build file, build.gradle, located in your project's Android slash app and verify the values are correct, especially the following values in the default config block. Check your pubspec.yaml for the version information. If you read the comments here, it tells you exactly how they get generated once you edit the value here. Your Android app build.gradle has definitions for Flutter version code and Flutter version name, which get pulled from a file called local.properties, located at the root of your project's Android folder. The build process gets the value from here and dynamically feeds them into the build.gradle. Now it's time to build the app for release. You have two possible release formats when publishing to the Play Store. App Bundle, the preferred way by the Google Play Store, and APK. We'll go ahead and generate an app bundle. At the root of your project, execute the command flutter build app bundle. You may get some warnings. You can ignore these for now. And after a build, an app bundle gets successfully generated inside the folder build app outputs bundle release. We'll refer to the generated file with the .aab extension when we're ready to release. Now we're ready to go to the Google Developer Play Console. This is the portal available to developers who want to publish their apps to the Google Play Store. At the time of this recording, in order to publish your app to the Google Play Store, it is mandatory to create a Google Developer account. The registration fee is a one-time payment of $25. 
their publishing process is more relaxed than the iOS one, and you can even see your app published within hours at best. In your dashboard, you can see all your apps already in production, but if this is your first time or you want to publish a new app, start by clicking the Create App button on the top right corner. In the form that appears, fill in the app name, default language, whether it is an app or a game, and whether it is free or paid. Check the developer program policies and US export laws options. Click on Create App. Now you land on the dashboard of your newly created app profile, and if you scroll down, it kind of guides you through the steps you need to complete for testing, setting it up, and releasing it. I'll skip the early release section. I'll let you explore that in depth on your own. In the Set up your app section, expand the View Tasks subsection. It conveniently shows a checklist of things you need to complete. Let's start at the top with the app access. Select all functionalities available without special access. Click Save. Next, state whether your app contains ads. It doesn't, so mark it as such and save. Next, content rating. Click Start Questionnaire. Add the email address associated with the developer or the application. I'll mark this application's category under the Utility, Productivity, Communication, or Other for simplicity. Click Next. This app doesn't have any violence, no sexual material, no offensive language, no references to controlled substances, no age-restricted products or activities. In the miscellaneous, I'll just go straight down on the nose. Clicking Next, then Submit, and we have our app's content ratings based on the options selected. Next up, Target Audience. This app is for 18 and over. Next. Not for children. Next. Hit Save at the end, and we have our Target Audience task complete. We're down to the news apps task. This is definitely not a news app. Hit save. And now we proceed to the store presence section. Select whether it is an app or a game. Select its category. We're sticking with productivity. Add the email address of the app or the developer. Phone number and website if applicable. and say you'll handle the external marketing, then save. Last in the Set up your app section, the store listing. This is what people will see on the Google Play Store about your app, so be precise and accurate in these fields. Fill out the app name, short description, and full description about your app. As far as graphics, you must have a 512 by 512 app icon for the Google Play Store. Also, you must have a feature graphic, a 1024 by 500 image, mostly for promotional reasons. You can add a link to a video if you have it. For phone screenshots, you should supply anywhere between 2 to 8 app screenshots. You can generate them from the Android simulator or even your installed app. Skip images for tablet as we are now supporting tablet. If you click Save, you notice immediately at the top how the app icon reflects on the dashboard. Sweet. Back on the dashboard, see how the Set up your app section completely disappears after having completed all its tasks underneath it. Time to release the app. You can expand the subtasks here and notice how you can test your app with a larger group of testers before you release it publicly, releasing it as an alpha version. If you click here, you can see how you can set up an alpha release, very similar to a production release, minus the storefront. Let's do a production release. Click on production, then create a release. Good thing we digitally signed our release version, because it clearly states here that you must have it signed. Click Continue. 
find your app bundle, the one we generated using the command flutter build app bundle. Remember, find that file and drag it into the app bundle section. Depending on the size of your bundle, either wait a bit or grab some coffee. Once completed, you'll see the app bundle entry with the version and additional metadata. Add some release details below. Hit save, then review release. Before releasing it fully, you must go back to the production tab and select the country's regions you want your app to be available. Let's make it available everywhere Google Play Store is available, pretty much the whole world. Click Add. Edit Release. Review Release one more time. Review and check last minute warnings and errors that might come up. These are simple warnings which we can disregard and won't keep us from publishing. Click Star Rollout to Production. Are we ready? Click Rollout. And done. Our app immediately goes into review. You just became a published developer. Congrats. Well, almost. Going back home, you will see the new app showing here, but you can't see the status yet. It shows as if it was in production already. Click on it to go to its dashboard. Even though here it shows in review, click on the link View on Google Play. See, still not ready. If you scroll down on this page, you can check a bunch of metrics and KPIs you can keep track of once your app is in the wild, like performance, vitals, etc. Very useful to check how it fares among users. Going back home, now you see the in review status. It just takes a bit to reflect here on the home page. Last thing to show you is the publishing overview, where you can control how your app gets published, whether automatically after a successful review or manually triggered. I'd like to decide when to publish it after it is reviewed. And that's it. I hope you all now feel motivated to publish your own Android Flutter apps, as you see the process is not as painful as people may think. So I hope to see some of you taking the leap. In the next video, I'll take you through the process of publishing the iOS version of this Flutter app to the iOS App Store, assets required, and prerequisites you need to fulfill before publishing, so stay tuned for that. Thank you for watching and see you on the next one. That's it for this video, so please stay tuned for more upcoming videos. Hit the subscribe button to stay updated and please like this video if you found it useful. Thank you so much for watching. Monkey.